downtown Columbia, South Carolina, in the Little Prayer Chapel. Where is it? 1026 Pope Street. And we're delighted that you've joined us. And I don't know whether you know much about South Carolina, but we have a saying, beautiful places and smiling faces. Amen. Somebody always asks this question, what do you have to smile about? And they point to so many topical subjects. What do you have to... We know the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. and surely that will make you smile. But I want to talk to you. That's right, you today. You. Well, you. You, you. Both of you. I want to talk to you today. And we, we have a subject. He has chosen you. No, 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 no. Not them. He's chosen you. You know, sometimes we uh, like to be a part of the congregation where everything can be addressed to the congregation. Right. You know, the pastor sometimes gets up and they're in the middle of a campaign to pay off the mortgage. And he will talk you, meaning plural, each of you. We haven't reached our goal. And somehow you can just sink down into the comfort of the congregation and know that he's talking about us but not me. <laughs> I'm doing my part. It's the rest of them. But today I don't want you to be a part of the congregation. I want you to know that he has chosen you. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, we can look in the Bible and find people that God has chosen. You know, the first name that comes to mind when we're studying the book of Exodus, Moses come to mind. God chose Moses. You know, it wasn't necessarily that Moses chose God. God chose Moses. And when we look at what God wanted Moses to do, we can sort of understand why Moses didn't choose God. God chose Moses for a significant and important and impactful, a historical, a seismic purpose. Something that would shatter and shake the earth for all time. You know, sometimes we look at Abraham. God chose Abraham. It wasn't that Abraham was leftovers or he was standing over there and nobody else wanted him. Abraham was a man of means and well spoken of in his community, but God chose him. And you know, when was the last time we even gave consideration that God has chosen us? And if he did choose us, for what purpose? You know, we uh, will recite and proclaim that we are Christians, that we're saved by grace, and that God knows every hair on our head, mm -hmm. and he can number them. But when we start thinking about God choosing us, well, we'd rather be in the congregation. God chose Peter, and Peter was standing in the courtyard that night when the police came to arrest Jesus. And men and women saw Peter and they chose him. They said, well, aren't you one that's following Jesus, the so-called Christ? I mean, they, they had a finger and they pointed Peter out and said, you are the one. They chose him as a follower of Christ. And Peter said, oh, no, not me. And he became angry. But God chose Peter. Yeah. Said, come, follow me. You know, when God chooses us, it's not just to be doing something to be doing something. Mm -hmm. God has a specific reason and purpose for choosing us. 
God chose Samuel. God chose Elijah. God chose the 12 disciples. I remember in Luke chapter 6 verse 12. They said that Jesus prayed all night long for the names of his apostles. The ones who were charged with the responsibility of carrying the gospel forth. God chose them, yes, and named them one by one. But I'm telling you this morning that he has chosen you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm getting this out of 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, the fourth verse, where it says, Beloved brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God, our God and Father, knowing has your election by God. That you were elected, selected, chosen by God. That he has fit you into the body of Christ for such a time as this. He has chosen you. You know, I hear people say, I am saved. I am an apostle. I'm a prophet, I'm a teacher, but rarely will you hear them say that I am chosen. I'm the chosen one. They say, well, where, where can I get some earthly understanding of what you're saying? Well, let's take the draft. The football draft, the basketball, let's just take the draft. Where in order to play professional ball, you have to be chosen by a team. Yeah. And not only people know when that they are chosen, they know in which draft and which number they were chosen. And not only do they individually, personally know when they were chosen, it seems that there's a television program where you can watch and the whole world will know when you were chosen and what position you had in the draft. But here in the church, we fall between the cracks in a place called the congregation. And we uh, identify ourselves as Christians. But on Monday morning at work, we are like Peter. When our company is engaged in ripping off everybody who gets electricity from South Carolina Electric and Gas, they're building a $9 billion power plant and everybody in the company knows that it's a ripoff, that they can't complete it, that it's over a budget, that they wasted money. But you come there and get paid every week knowing that they're lying. You are chosen by God to stand up against things like that. You can't participate in that and call yourself a Christian. You can't. You know that there's racial discrimination. Yeah. You can't go to that workplace and say that I'm a believer in Jesus Christ yeah. and accept the inequity, the iniquity. You cannot accept it. All right. You can't continue to work there. You cannot go to the lottery every day and work there against the cause of Christ, putting more people at peril and breaking up families, causing havoc. Because you are sponsoring an irresponsible betting scheme. You are chosen by God. Paul is in Thessalonica. And he's speaking to the church of Thessalonica. And he's saying to them, we give thanks to God always for you. All making mention of you. In our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of our God, the Father, knowing that you are beloved and chosen by God. All right. My God, this is Paul praying for you. He's praying for our gospel did not come to you in word only but also in power. So when the word of God came to you, it didn't come weak, anemic. 
It didn't come without demonstration or manifestation of resurrection power. When the word came to you, it came fully vested, prepared to go out and change things. God chose you, but it didn't leave you powerless. The same power that resurrected Jesus Christ is the power that flows in you. Now, I don't know why it is this way, but we will brag about the kind of car we drive. I understood a friend of mine had a Jaguar. And he said, excuse me, Bishop, it's not a Jaguar. It's a Jaguar. Well, I stand corrected. Uh, we will brag about the kind of house that we live in. And said, so, uh, I live in a gated community. And we call the name of that community that we selected and could afford to move in as one of the great attributes about us. Yeah. But when, my brothers and sisters, was the last time you've heard someone say, I was chosen by God. He said, well, if God chose you, he chose you to do what? Be what? God chose you to be like he is. All right. Holy. Yeah. Sanctified. Yeah. Set aside. Yeah. Dedicated. For the purpose of the kingdom of God. Amen. That this body that you reside in, your spirit is held close in is to be one with God and one with his word, one with his people, that it should be loving, kind, that all of the fruit of the Spirit should be manifested. Why? Because God chose you. Yeah. Now, when, I don't know, when we were kids, we played basketball. And uh, we would want to pick a team. But before you could choose a team, we had to go to the free throw line, and the first people who made the free throw could pick a team. So now you had to be qualified to choose. You had to be qualified to be on a team. And so I would go up to the line, and they would never want me to go first because the only thing that I could do was shoot free throw. So I'm going to make the free throw, and I'm going to get to pick the team. But as soon as I hit, everybody turned their back because they didn't want to be on my team. I couldn't play. You hear what I say. So now, there was a qualification to be chosen. There was an expectation when you were chosen. To be on the team, you had to bring some skills. You not only had to go right, but you had to go left. You had to have a crossover. But God chose you. He said, I don't care what kind of dribble you have, what kind of jump shot you have. I don't care whether you can dunk or not. I choose you. And the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling in you would be your game. Amen. It wasn't the game you brought. It was the game he had. You know, I hear people praying all the time, so Lord, give me strength. If chosen by God, you don't ask for strength. He is your strength. All right. He said, Lord, give me courage. No. Chosen by God with the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, he is your courage. Mm -hmm. You see, theology today would have you and God separated. But our theology brings you and God together. When God chooses you, he equips you. When God guides you, he provides for you. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. You were chosen by God. And so now were you chosen to show up on Sunday for an hour or two, to give him praise for an hour or two, to sing a song of Zion for an hour or two, were you chosen to dress up for an hour or two? Were you chosen to have a clean, pure mouth for an hour or two? Were you chosen to be decent for an hour or two? Or were you chosen by God for all eternity to represent him 
the Trinity, the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit, chosen by God. Now, I don't know whether you realize or not, but this is better than a draft pick. This is better than a Heisman Trophy. This is better than a pro contract. This is better than a lottery ticket. This is better, better than a, a, a being on television on the Wheel of Fortune. This is better than knowing all the answers in jeopardy. This is better than come on down, the price is right. Being chosen by God is more important, more powerful, more meaningful than anything that you can think of in this life. You know, so many of you are waiting for your change to come. And I, I said, well, what is the change? They said, well, if I could just win the lottery, my change will come. And the rest of it are waiting on your ship to come in. Somebody say amen. I said, man, when my ship come in, I said, well, when do you expect it? Well, I got my taxes in before the 15th. It should be here any day now. There are those of you waiting for your ship to come in. I'm telling you that before there was a ship, there was a God. And he, before the formation of the earth itself, before all of creation, he has chosen you. And chosen you to be what? To be a child of God? To be a son of God, a daughter of God? To be in the family of God? To be in fellowship with God? To be able to worship God? He's chosen you in all holiness, in all sanctification, in the highest tabernacle there is. In the glory of glory of glories of glories. He's chosen you. He's asked you to walk with him to talk with him, to be in him, with him, and for him. He has chosen you. You're on the championship team. You don't have to go through the preliminaries. You don't have to go through the season. You're automatically in the championship game. Why? Because he chose you. And he paid a price. So many times uh, people can get together on Monday morning and talk about the finances of the draft, how much somebody got when they were drafted. So, oh, you know, he got one million, 10 million, 50 million. I've never heard him talk about Jesus and the draft, that he chose you. He didn't choose you 110 in the draft. He chose you first. He chose you when you were still a glimmer in your mother's eye. He chose you. You were predestined, pre-elected to his grace and his mercy. The provenient grace of God had already gone before you. He made a plan for you. He made a way for you. He brought a way out of your trials, your tribulation, because he loves you. Sometimes people will choose you for your talent, your skills. In my case, you choose you for your good looks. Somebody say amen. They'll choose you for all manner of earthly things, carnal things. They will choose you because you're right-handed. They'll choose you because you wear glasses. They'll choose you because you have wavy hair, blonde hair, black eyes. They'll choose you because you have brown eyes, beautiful brown eyes, but you have brown eyes, blue eyes. They'll choose you for any number of meaningless, spurless reasons. But God chose you because he made you in his own image. You've been chosen by God. And for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So the men of God who represent God in your selection, that we should be shining examples of who he is, what he is, how he is, so that your election to this chosen position is not spurious, it's not incidental, it's not accidental, it's for a purpose. And so, well, what is the purpose? When you became a follower of Christ, having received the word in much affliction, but with the joy of the Holy Spirit so that you can become an example to all in America and the rest of the world who believe. 
For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in the United States, but all over the world, but also in every place. It is your faith toward God that has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. Because when you are chosen by God, everybody, anybody, somebody can see it. Yes. You don't have to announce it. Because the love of God is all over you. Mm. How you turn to God from idols. To serve the living and true God. And wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Chosen by God for such a time as this. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you would understand that you have had an experience that's far more important than the NFL draft. Far more important than the NBA draft. Far more important than the selection of the Heisman Trophy. Right. More important than the lottery. God himself has chosen you. Not to hide you in the cleft of the rock so that you might see his back. But to be face to face with the living one true God. That you might feel his breath on your face. That he might come into full knowledge of who you are and who he is. That in Christ, chosen by him. All power is now in your hands. The power to what? To reveal him to others that they might be saved. My brothers and sisters, today I hope you can accept your draft pick chosen by God. I hope you can accept him and realize your place and that your name is on the road. That you are on the team. That he's writing your, written your name down in the book of life. And that for all eternity, you will be able to say glory, 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 honor and glory to the Lamb of God, holy, holy, holy. My brothers and sisters, today, Paul is encouraging us in the book of Thessalonians to come to Jesus. And let's be real about it. Accept the gift of being chosen. I know many of you have been hurt. You wanted to marry someone and they chose someone else. I know you wanted to move in a house and someone else chose it before you did. I know perhaps you are in choosing your children. You chose them over a new car. You chose them over a better living condition. You chose them over clothes for yourself. And they got up in age. They chose something and someone else. But I want you to know that this God that we serve has put everything else aside and he gave his only begotten son so that he could choose you. Amen. If you would like to choose him today, it's very simple. Invite the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and make it his throne. Mm -hmm.